So hi everyone and welcome to this video on the ramsey cass Kuhlman's growth model. In particular, we're picking up from where we left off in the last video in defining an RCE and now going into actually solving for the equilibrium allocations and the competitive equilibrium. So the way we do that is we first start with the agent, then we go to the firm, and then we appeal to the steady state. So we're going to go through that in detail uh, with the derivation, and then we'll go step by step. So uh, we start with a Bellman. We start with the agent, with the agent's Bellman, the agent, okay, or the consumer. So recall that in the past video, we said that the Bellman is a function of the individual and the aggregate state. So that's a X, X, right? This individual state is just K. This aggregate state is capital K. And uh, in uh, in this re in a recursive uh, form, uh, in this particular formulation, okay, uh, T, T, let's put it out of recursive form. So we have H, T, uh, K, T plus one, U, Okay, whoops, U, U, uh, the CT is equal to WTHT plus uh, one minus tau K RTKT plus uh, tau, uh, capital TT, which is the lump sum tax minus investment, which is KT plus one plus one minus delta KT, one minus HT, okay, plus, Okay, beta expected value V, X, T plus one. Uh, let me try and squeeze this all together. Okay, X, T plus one, small X, T plus one rather. Uh, and uh, you have big X, T plus one. Okay, so that's our Bellman equation, right? And uh, to start off, okay, we take the first order conditions. Is Okay, so first, before that, notice that this entire thing here is just CT. This is one minus HT, of course. So this entire thing is just UCT one minus HT, which is just the utility function, right? So don't be confused with that. So we take the first order conditions. So if we take the first order condition with respect to HT, we get, uh, let's say this, CT is the first argument. This is the second argument of the utility function. So we take the derivative of the first argument, CT one minus HT, right? And uh, this first derivative with respect to HT, it's times WT, right? It appears there, but uh, it also appears uh, here in uh, in this, so in the second argument, so we get U2 prime CT, we only need the primes u to uh, ct one minus ht times uh, negative one is equal to zero, and uh, here we basically get u one ct one minus ht wt is equal to u two ct one minus ht. Oops, and uh, this okay is equation one. And uh, this is our labor hours, labor hours, Euler equation. Okay. Next, okay, uh, if we take the derivative with respect to kt plus 1, okay, we get um, in the first argument, kt plus 1 appears once. So that's u1 ct 1 minus ht times negative 1. Then uh, it also appears in the continuation value. So beta expected value V K T plus one X T plus one X T plus one. Okay. So that's what we have there. And uh, we equate it to zero, right? And we basically get that uh, U1 C T one minus H T is equal to beta expected value v k t plus one x t plus one x t plus one okay now okay we don't explicitly know okay this derivative right this derivative is unknown to us so because this is unknown okay we need to derive 
the envelope equation. Equation, right? And uh, to derive the envelope equation, it's quite simple. So you take the derivative of the Bellman with respect to KT, right? Because then what you can do is you can just bring it up a period and that would make sense. So the derivative of the Bellman with respect to KT, that's just a U1, okay? CT, one minus HT. Derivative of CT, that would be mean we have um, one minus tau K RT um, plus one minus delta. Right, and we don't have a kt in the other than because that's already kt plus one. Okay, then move this up, move this up one period. So we get u1 ct plus one, one minus ht plus one. Okay, uh, times one minus tau k. Uh, tau is irrelevant of time. Uh, not a function of time, rather. So we have this one, okay? Then you can plug it uh, back into here. So plug this one into this one. So what we get is U1, CT, 1 minus HT, beta expected value of a U1, CT plus 1, 1 minus HT plus 1, times 1 minus tau K, RT plus one plus one minus delta. Okay, so we have that there. From here, okay, uh, so this is equation two. This is the capital Euler equation. Capital Euler equation. Okay, capital Euler equation. So after this one, okay, so that's the consumer's problem. Now, Okay, let's go to the firm's problem. We go to firm's problem. Firm's problem. Okay, and uh, we have that uh, recall. Okay, recall. W is equal to the marginal product of labor, KH. And uh, we also have that R is equal to FK, uh, KH, right? So uh, we have these two, okay? And uh, recall the given in the prob uh, given kh is equal to a t k bar t eta k t uh, theta h t one minus theta, right? So what we do is we take the derivative of this, and that will basically be w and h. So um, w is equal to the derivative of this production function with respect to h. So uh, we get um, one minus theta, a t k bar t eta, k t theta, h t negative theta, right? And let's call this equation three. And then R would be the derivative of this function with respect to capital, right? With respect to capital. Now, notice we have the aggregate capital and the, um, the individual per capita, the one with the bar and the one without. The consumer doesn't really have a decision on K bar, but it does have a decision on KT, right? On the small KT, not the one with the bar. So we just take the derivative of that and take the other as sort of like a given. So bring that down, that's theta, AT, K bar T eta, KT theta minus one, HT one minus theta. Now you see that, uh, that sort of uh, not deriving it with respect to K bar, it would be the main difference between this uh, competitive equilibrium and the social planners problem that will create that distortion, okay? So now having that, okay, uh, appealing now to the consistency in aggregation, we can plug, okay, we can plug three to one, right? Because we have a wage there as well as uh, four to two, right? Okay, four to two. So um, recall, okay, the uh, recall one, one is just uh, U1 CT1 minus HT times W is equal to U2 CT1 minus HT WT. What we do is we plug in the WT, so you get U1 CT1 minus HT times 
one minus theta, a t k bar, t eta, k t theta, h t negative theta, right? And this is equal to u2, c t, one minus h t, right? So we have that one there. And uh, having sort of this particular conjecture now, okay, we can now go to two, okay? Two is equal to this one. So we get, uh, let me just copy this one so I don't need to write. That's equal to u1, okay, ct1 minus ht, being equivalent to the discounted value of util marginality of consumption today times one minus tau krt plus one plus the depreciation. So that's the one here, cool. Then we have, uh, recall three, uh, sorry, four can be plugged in here, right? We can plug in the four here. Okay, but we need to bring up the four up period. So we get U1, CT, one minus HT, equal to beta expected value U1, CT plus one, one minus HT plus one, times uh, one minus tau K, times uh, RT plus one. So we need to bring it up a period. So that's theta, A T plus one, okay, A T plus one, K bar t plus one eta, k t plus one theta minus one, h t plus one, one minus theta plus a one minus delta, right? So let's call this one one star, like a new one. Okay? And then this equation here is gonna be two star. Okay, that's what we have. So uh, from here, okay, from here, we start with uh, manipulate uh, two star and appeal to the steady state, to the steady state. So remember at the steady state, nothing changes. So all the time subscripts is irrelevant. All of them will be the same value, steady state, okay? So what happens at the steady state? You get U1, C star, one minus H star, equal to beta expected value u1 c star one minus h star times uh, one minus tau k theta a star k bar star eta k star theta minus one h star one minus theta plus uh, one minus delta right uh, clearly, if I divide both of these sides by u1, c star, 1 minus h star, right, u1, uh, c star, 1 minus h star, and I'll divide both sides by beta, so the beta can also cancel out. I get this one will cancel out, this one will cancel out, I get, and then this one will cancel out, I get 1 over beta is equal to um, tau k, 1 minus tau k, theta a star k bar star eta k star theta minus one h star one minus theta plus uh, one minus delta. Then uh, I can transpose this term to the other side. So I get one over beta minus one minus delta equal to uh, one minus tau k times theta. Now, this thing here is sort of interesting, okay? This thing here is gonna be Y star over K star. The reason for that is sort of simple, okay? That's because it's gonna be A, K, Y star is A, K bar, K star, theta, H star, one minus theta. Again, this is like the production function we were given with, but in the steady state. And then K star is just this one, K star. So notice the only difference would be if I'm going to simplify this, it will be k star theta minus 1. And that's exactly this k star. So I can rewrite that expression as y star divided by k star. So y star divided by k star plus, uh, okay, that's the one. Okay. Now also note that um, beta is equal to 1 over 1 plus rho. So if we simplify it, we're going to get 1 plus rho minus 1 plus delta is equal to one minus tau k theta y star over k star, right? So we get a rho plus delta being equal to one minus tau k 
theta y star divided by k star. Okay. Then uh, simplifying further, we get uh, rho plus delta over 1 minus tau k theta equal to y star over k star. Now, it's more intuitive to interpret capital per output. So we're going to flip things. So we get k star over y star is equal to 1 minus tau k theta divided by rho plus delta. Okay. This is our steady state. Steady state. Um, capital to output ratio. Okay, so that's when we manipulate equation two star, we can get that. And uh, if we manipulate equation one star, okay, it's gonna be roughly the same procedure. So now using uh, equation one star, okay, and uh, we get something very similar. So using one star, and then appealing to the steady state. We get um, u1 c star 1 minus h star times a 1 minus theta a star k bar theta and I'm oh, sorry, k bar star eta, k star theta, h star 1 uh, minus theta. Uh, then uh, we get um, equal to u2 uh, c star 1 minus h star. And uh, simplifying, okay, we get, if we divide both sides by um, u1, uh, c star, 1 minus h star, u1, c star, 1 minus h star, this drops off, you get um, 1 minus theta, a star, k bar star eta, k star theta, h star negative theta, equal to uh, u2, C star 1 minus h star u1 c star 1 minus h star okay then uh, I can multiply both sides by 1 over 1 minus uh, theta I get this one a star k bar star eta k star theta h star negative theta equal to u2 C star 1 minus H star over 1 minus theta U1 C star 1 minus H star. This thing here, okay, notice it's going to be equal to uh, H, uh, sorry, Y star divided by H star, right? Divided by H star. Uh, and that's just because uh, it, Y star again is A star k bar star eta, k star theta, h star, one minus theta divided by h star. So this h star here will simplify into minus theta, which is that one, right? So I basically get y star over h star is equal to u2, c star, one minus h star, divided by one minus theta, u1, C star, 1 minus H star. And again, it's intuitive to have Y at the bottom. So we want a labor R to output ratio. So we get uh, H star over Y star is equal to 1 minus theta times U1, C star, 1 minus H star over U2, C star, 1 minus H star. This is our steady state, steady state labor R to output ratio, okay? And uh, basically that solves the uh, equilibrium, the competitive equilibrium. These are the ratios that we would want to solve for and calibrate for when we do end up with that. So this is the solution to basically the competitive equilibrium and those allocations. In the next video, we'll talk about the social planners problem. So thank you very much for your attention and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.